CDIs, that means capacitive discharge ignitions. The reality is they could be named anything. Ignition, what does it do for your bike? Well, if you haven't seen our other video on it, you need to watch it because this video will make no sense for you if you don't watch that video. Make sure you watch it. But we're gonna go and show you the theory and how it applies and on the dyno. We'll show you exactly everything we were talking about in our previous video that you need to go watch or this one won't make sense. So let's do some dyno pulls. I'm gonna start off with two degrees of ignition timing. That means straight across the board, two degrees of ignition timing from bottom to top. Let's see what kind of horsepower that makes. First up, I said two, I meant three. Three degrees of ignition timing. Let's see what it does to the power. And then we're gonna start showing you what we talked about on developing a custom ignition curve for this bike. Let's take a look, Ski, at what she did. So, you can hear it revs out up top good once it gets on the pipe, but what happens is, prior to getting on the pipe, she's an absolute dog, right? So we're gonna show you through how you optimize an ignition curve on what you do to develop it, and then why different ignition values do different things to horsepower, and then why it's important to go to the track and verify some of the things you test. All right, so what a weird looking power shape, right? It's got no horsepower down low, and we're gonna, at the end of this, show you what a proper curve will look like. Comes on the pipe a little bit, and then it's just flat. Okay, and then right, right here at the end, it picks up pretty dramatically and then signs off. But look how much RPM we got out of this thing. This peak right here is at 13.2. I mean, that's up there, about 19 horsepower and a half, and uh, then it signs off. You can hear it kick in to overdrive up here. So at 13.2, three degrees of timing might be a good value. Next up, let's go to five degrees of timing. All righty, five, five degrees of timing. All right, five degrees of timing. You can see it's a very similar curve shape we had as three degrees. All right, three degrees of timing, five degrees of timing. We just picked up everywhere, very similar peak. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go with seven. Seven degrees of timing. Eleven degrees of time. Eleven degrees of time. So, once we get through all of our timing, we're gonna overlay all the charts. Thirteen, lucky number thirteen degrees of time. Let's see what she does. All right. 13 degrees of timing. Now we've got what looks like a relatively normal dyno curve. Let's keep playing around, 15's up next. Condition testing done and dusted. Let's get to the results and see what the different types of ignition curves do to the power curve. Now, I have to precursor this with something very quickly. You have to understand that now you have to go to the track, take what you learned, and then fine tune this curve to work at the track, and there's a lot of reasons for that. What we're gonna discuss is that pipe temperature is really what that ignition curve is driving. It's obvious if you think about it, that from a combustion standpoint, there's gonna be one ignition curve that's more optimum. However, these bikes work heavily upon pipe temperature. And because of that, we have to manipulate that pipe temperature via the ignition curve. So when we add ignition advance, it combusts earlier, it burns more quickly, you could say more quickly, but it's gonna be finished burning earlier. And generally speaking, because of the way expansion ratio works, we're gonna have a cooler overall pipe temperature. The opposite is true of very low ignition numbers, right? If we don't have a lot of ignition. And so we're gonna have a hotter pipe temperature. 
And as the speed of sound changes due to pipe temperature, we get different results from the pipe. So it's interesting because two strokes are a constant compromise. We're never happy with where we're at on anything because we have to mesh all of the best variables together. So let's go look at these dyno charts after all these runs. We went from three degrees all the way up to 17 degrees of timing in increments of about two degrees each time. So let's take a look at these charts and see what we can glean from the charts. And then I'm gonna show you how we piece that all together and make an ultimate dyno curve or an ultimate ignition curve and then show you those results. Alrighty, here is what we got when we had three degrees of ignition timing on this 105. If you look, we're not very high on the peak horsepower. We're up at 1883. Over here at uh, 10,000, 11,075, we're down at uh, 18, 1750. And the curve's kind of got a weird shape. It comes on, then it falls down, and then it comes up and then it folds flat. But we look, we got a lot of RPM out of this thing. So it made great power way up here at uh, 13,000. I say great, I mean, it's making horsepower up there, but we're way out at 13,000 RPM, and then it over revs and looks kind of normal. So let's see what happens when we go to five degrees of ignition timing. So this was the runs with five degrees, and boom, it just picked up horsepower everywhere. But you can see way out here, and I just let off here, right? I could have gone forever. They're about the same. So three and five, way out here about the same, but five is just better across the board, more bottom, more mid-range, more top. So it clearly tells us that all the way through here, we need more timing than three degrees. Let's keep it going. Let's see what happens when we go to seven degrees of timing. All right, we're still better yet, but you can already see something happening. Seven degrees of timing is better all the way through, except over here, now three and five have over revved better, right? So... Those are making more overrev, and on the front side, this one's better, but the overrev is already trending a little bit worse. Let's go to nine degrees of timing, and I'm probably going to clear this graph up. So there's nine degrees in the green, so it picked up more power again, but over here didn't really pick up, so that's something to keep note of. Over here we picked up, didn't really pick up, and then picked back up, not really better here, and then better here. And then it, again, what do you notice? We're signing off earlier and earlier and earlier with the more ignition we get. So let's go, I'm gonna clean some of this up. So we're gonna get rid of five degrees, seven degrees, and we're just gonna have three and nine. So there's three and nine, right? So there's where we started, here's where we're headed. Let's go and add, oops, let's go to 11 degrees of timing. Ooh, I don't, don't know what happened here. Okay, my computer busted, graph test, alrighty. Wonderful things about PCs is they never work when you want them to. All right, here we go. History log, make sure we got what we want. We got nine degrees, 11 degrees, and three degrees. Now, here is 11 degrees of timing in green, nine degrees in light blue. You can see we're still better on the front side, okay? But right here in about this area, nine, seven, and 11 are actually about the same. Let's go back and put that on there just so you guys can see. Here's a seven. What do you know? Right around here, there's a convergence point where all those timing curves are about the same, but on the front of that, more is better. And after that point, more is better. But what do you know? We're already still trending an earlier sign-off. Here past 12,800 starts to sign off a rock with more timing. Let's go to, so I'm going to leave 11, pull the other ones and go to 13. All right, 13 is uh, in green and nine is in blue. So we're a little bit better all the way up. And actually better in that one area, interestingly enough, but a little bit worse right here at 9,700. And then here we're slightly worse right there, better here, and then better up top. And then again, starting to sign off earlier. Every time we add timing, we sign off. So let's go just kind of show you that trend. Let's go all the way back from 13 to 7 degrees, and we can really see that trend. Out here, less timing is better for sure, right? Let's go add, so I'm gonna go put back the uh, 13 is gonna be on the screen. Let's go to 15 degrees. Now, 15 degrees just picked up on the front side across the board. Really like this change. The engine getting really happy with 15, but right here about the same, happy again, about the same, happier again, but what do you know? We're signing off earlier again. So if we go back to that trend, go all the way back from 15 to seven. So that's a huge change, right? 15 to seven, take the 13 out. And what do you know? We got more rev at less timing. This is three degrees higher at the bottom. Three, right? And it's still really good out here. Way out there at 13,600. All right, let's go to the next one. 17 degrees, which is the highest we tested in this test. 
And now we're finally at the point of diminishing gains, right? 17 in green, 15 in blue. And you can tell that it's a little bit worse, 17 degrees, almost everywhere. So 17 is clearly not the way to go. And we've come again with more timing. We've lost overrev. 17 is no longer revving as far. And look at three degrees out here. Still more overrev. Now, partially, even if we put three degrees of timing in the new power curve on these ones right here, it will not rev like three did because the pipe has not gotten as hot yet. It hasn't gone through that heat curve yet. And uh, that, that's called prep, prepping the pipe earlier than you want to be to get what you want to be. So if you really want to get this result out here, you'd have to start pulling timing up here somewhere, knock off some power, and then it'll over rev better. That's the stuff you do on the track. You say, well, what does this rider want? Maybe he doesn't want all this horsepower here. So he wants more rev. Okay, we'll knock some power out, but then we'll get some more rev. That's where you got to go track testing. Now let's show you the, the, so I think let's go through all these tests. I'm going to put them all up on the screen. Five, seven, nine, 11, 12, 13, and 17. Okay, three. So you can see a clear trend, right? We picked up power as we added timing all the way till about 15 degrees, right? And then once we hit 15, it was about the same, but they all sign off earlier the more timing we add. So how do we build a timing curve? Well, what we do is we go all the way through the sweep and then we take the best at every RPM and then we build a timing curve and then we go test and then we fine tune that curve. So what does that look like? Well, let's show you. So I'm gonna back out, I'm gonna leave 17.3 up there. And then I'm gonna add a test we did. This should be the right one. I'm not 100% sure. If it's not, I'll, I'll find the right one. Yeah, so here's one. This is what a complete programmed ignition curve looks like. So now we've gone through, mapped every point the best we can, right? So we've taken the best of everything, meshed it all together in one map, and that's in the light blue. And as you can see, it's the best of everywhere, right? We're trying to get the most, we've preparatory it, and we've start pulling timing out, and hey, now we've got pretty good over rev right? And on the front side, if this bike did not have a power valve, you would have seen bigger dramatic changes in timing where the bottom would have been a lot better with more timing. But because it has a power valve and the power valve is already influencing the pipe the way timing does, you only need X amount of timing on the front side. So this bike doesn't require a lot of timing down here compared to non-power valve engines because it has a power valve. But you can see that this is blended and tried to put all of the best power curves together to match this exact engine combination on the dyno. What happens if we change a head? What happens if we change a pipe? What happens if we change a port? You gotta go through this whole thing again because now the engine's different. That's what custom ignitions do. And if you watched our other video, I hope you could put these two videos together and kind of figure out what we're doing with custom ignitions.